I want to talk about a really nice example of a Lie group homomorphism, which is one that goes from the group SU2 of special unitary 2x2 two two matrices to the group SO3 of special orthogonal 3x3 three three matrices, that is, rotations of R3. But first I need to just tell you what SU2 is. So SU2 is a group of matrices which satisfies two conditions. First, special, which we already know means determine equals one. The two by two complex matrices and a unitary. This means a dagger A equals the identity. Where this is a bit like a transpose A equals the identity, but it's for complex matrices. So a dagger is a transpose conjugate. So you take the transpose and then you take the complex conjugate of all the matrix entries. So this is a bit like a, a complex geometry version of orthogonal. It turns out to be a very useful condition. Um, there's actually a very easy way to characterize these matrices uh, you know, to write down all the matrices in this set. It turns out they're the matrices A, B, minus B bar, A bar, where A and B are complex numbers such that A absolute value squared plus B absolute value squared equals one. So let me just quickly explain why this is. Well, this condition A dagger A equals the identity is telling us that A dagger equals A inverse. And if we write out what that means, we get, um, let's say A is A, B, C, D. So A dagger will be A bar, C bar, B bar, D bar. And A inverse, what with this being a two by two matrix, will be one over the determinant of A times uh, D minus B minus C A. Now we're assuming that det A equals one, so we can ignore this one over det A. And then we just get A bar equals D, C bar equals minus B. And that's where this comes from, right? This is C equals minus B bar and D equals A bar. What is the determinant condition? Well, once we're in this form, the determinant is A A bar plus B B bar, which is this absolute value A squared plus absolute value B squared, and that's supposed to be equal to one. So that's why we get this answer. The Lie algebra, little su2, is obtained by, you know, imposing both the condition for determinant equal to one, Lie algebra, and the condition for A dagger A equals the identity, Lie algebra. So it turns out what we get is these are the matrices X, such that um, well, the trace of x has to be equal to zero. That comes from the determinant condition up here. And x dagger equals minus x. That's the um, analog of anti-symmetric in this world of uh, daggers instead of transposes. Okay, so I'm not gonna justify this. Um, this follows by similar kinds of arguments to the ones we've already seen in the course. But we can now write down a general element of the Lie algebra, little su2. Right, so if we have a matrix X whose trace is zero, then the two diagonal entries have to have opposite sign. And uh, so that's one condition. And the other condition is X dagger equals minus X. Well, if you're on the diagonal, what happens when you take the dagger is you just get transpose, sorry, uh, conjugated complex conjugated and so if you have a complex number x plus i y and you conjugate it um, you get x minus i y so if that's going to be equal to minus x plus i y then x had better be zero in other words things on the diagonal have to be purely imaginary so let's put i x and minus i x on the diagonal and things on the off diagonal well we can have anything in the top right, y plus i, z. But then this uh, conjugate transpose condition tells us that what we have to have down in the bottom left is minus y plus i, z. So now x, y, and z are real numbers. They're the real and imaginary parts of these um, matrix entries. 
So just be careful here. We're looking at a subgroup of GLNC, subgroup of uh, the complex matrices. But what we've ended up with is a real vector space, right? This is a three dimensional real vector space. There's no way this is a complex vector space. So this is a real Lie group, but it's sitting inside the group of complex matrices. So I'm going to introduce a piece of notation. I'm going to write if V is X, Y, Z in R3, I'm going to write M V for this matrix uh, I, X, Y plus I, Z. I have to put it down here. Uh, minus Y plus I, Z minus I, X. Okay, so that's just a piece of notation which is convenient for writing things like the Lie bracket. So what is the Lie bracket? This is going to be an exercise. The Lie bracket on little su2 is the following. If I take mu, some element corresponding to uh, a vector u, and mv, and I bracket them together, magically what I get is m of 2 times u cross v, where this is the vector cross product. So this is a three-dimensional Lie algebra we can think of it as R3, and it turns out the Lie bracket is basically the cross product on R3. Okay, uh, one more equation which I'm not going to prove, I'm going to get you to check because it's just a big computation, is that the trace of mu times mv equals the uh, twice, or maybe minus 2, times the dot product of u and v. So we're going to use both of these equations in a moment. So here is what I'm going to claim. Lemma. If A is in SU2, the special unitary 2 by 2 group, then A M V A inverse is in little SU2 for all MVs in little su2. So any anything in little su2 can be written as m subscript v. And I'm saying that if you conjugate mv by a, you stay in su2. So that's telling us that a mv a inverse equals mw for some w in R3. Um, moreover, W is of the form RA applied to V for some rotation RA. So in other words, for each element um, of SU2, there's some rotation RA such that we get this condition that A M V A inverse equals m subscript r a v okay so actually i'm not going to prove it's a rotation i'm just going to prove it's an orthogonal matrix but it'll turn out to be a rotation um, so let's let's prove this first of all how do we see that a m v a inverse is in little su2 well there's two things to check we need to check that the trace of a m v a inverse is zero and that a m v a inverse all dagger is minus a m v a inverse so let's check that the trace of a m v a inverse equals well the trace has this nice property that it doesn't change when you conjugate a matrix like this so this is equal to the trace of m v which is zero so that's good and we want to understand a m v a inverse dagger when you take dagger just like with transpose you can take the daggers of the, the factors as long as you reverse the order of the factors so we get a inverse dagger m v dagger a dagger and remember that because a is a special unitary matrix a dagger is a inverse so this is a inverse inverse which is a times 
MV dagger. Well, MV is in little su2, and matrices in little su2 satisfy x dagger equals minus x. So this is minus MV, and then finally A dagger is A inverse. So that's minus what we started with. So together these two things tell us that A MV A inverse is in little su2 as desired. How do we show that um, the new vector W, such that A MV A inverse is MW, is related to V by a rotation? Well, what we want to do is we want to see what happens if I take the dot product of RA V1 with RA V2, we want to show that this is equal to V1 dot V2 for all V1 and V2, and that will tell us that RA is an orthogonal transformation. Um, so let's just compute. Um, so to take the dot product of two vectors, if you go back up and have a look at this formula, uh, the trace of m u m v is minus two u dot v. So this is equal to minus a half times the trace of um, m r a v one times m r a v two which we can calculate this is minus a half times the trace of a m v1 a inverse by definition of this matrix r a and then a m v2 a inverse and if i multiply all this out the a inverse the a cancel and i'm left with minus a half trace a m v1 m v2 a inverse and now because the trace is unchanged by a conjugation like this this is just equal to minus a half times the trace of m v1 m v2 which again by our formula above is equal to v1 dot v2 okay so at least this is an orthogonal transformation it doesn't quite show that it's a rotation okay so let's get a new page So what I've got now is I've got a map R that takes an element of SU2 and it produces for us an orthogonal transformation. It'll turn out it lives in the special orthogonal group of matrices, of uh, rotations, but for now let's just say O3. And what I'd like to understand is what is R star? What is the corresponding map on Lie algebras. Can we compute it? Well, yes, we can. So we know that R x t of an element of the Lie algebra, which is going to be called m u for some u in R3, is x of t r star applied to m u. So if we want to get r star mu, we want to calculate what r star is, we just need to differentiate with respect to t and set t equal to zero. So if we differentiate this left hand side with respect to t, set t equal to zero, what we'll get on the right hand side is r star mu. Okay, so let's see, what is this? Remember r a is defined in this slightly odd way that the matrix corresponding to R of some matrix A uh, applied to V is A M V A inverse. So if A is X T M U, what we get is um, the matrix corresponding to R X T M U applied to V equals X T M U applied to M V uh, sorry multiply with M V multiply with X minus T M U. So if I differentiate this with respect to T, 
what I'm going to get on one side will be the matrix corresponding to um, R star MU applied to V. And on this side, I will get by the uh, product rule, um, I'll get a factor of MU. And then I'll also get minus a factor of MU at the right hand side. So I get MU MV minus MV MU, which is exactly the Lie bracket of MU and MV, which I can, well, I didn't compute, I told you to compute. And it should be equal to M twice U times V. Which is a cross product. So just comparing the left and right hand sides, we get that R star MU V equals 2U cross V. Now I want to know what this R star MU is as a matrix, as an element of the Lie algebra of the orthogonal group. So I really need to understand this cross product in terms of matrices. Well, here is a matrix. Uh, let's see if I can get the signs right. I'm going to say minus u3. So u is going to be this vector u1, u2, u3. So 0 minus u3, u2. Um, u3, 0 minus u1. Minus u2, u1, 0. I claim that if you multiply this matrix into the vector v1, v2, v3, what you get is the vector given by the cross product of u and v, possibly up to a sign. Let's see. So I'm going to get um, u2 v3 minus uh, u3 v2. That's the first entry. That's good. That's the right thing. And then uh, u3 v1 minus u1 v3. Again, that's the right thing. And finally, uh, u1 v2 minus u to V1. That's the formula for the cross product. Okay, so what I'm saying is R star of this matrix MU, which was, let's go back up and look, is this guy. Um, so U is now going to be XYZ. Uh, is given by 0 minus z y z 0 minus x minus y x 0. Okay, so I'm converting between u's and x, y, z's. Sorry about that. Um, but So this was my m u if, if u is equal to x, y, z. Oh, and there's also a factor of 2. Remember, this is twice the cross product. Okay, so this is a nice example and a, quite a non-trivial example of a Lie algebra homomorphism um, from little su2 to little o3. Starts with a anti-Hermitian trace-free matrix and it produces an anti-symmetric matrix. But you can see it's a linear map. It's linear in x, y, and z. So that's the important thing. Um, and it turns out it preserves Lie brackets and all the nice properties that it should have. I just want to make one more collection of comments. Um, so we've got this homomorphism R from SU2 to O3. And it turns out this is not an isomorphism. So for one thing, it doesn't hit all of the elements of O3, it only hits the rotations, so the ones with determinant 1. Um, but even if you forget about that and you just look at as a map from SU2 to SO3, this is still not an isomorphism because it's 2 to 1. For example, the matrix A and the matrix minus A both map to the same rotation. You can see that because A M V A inverse equals minus A M V minus A inverse. Okay, so that turns out that's the only ambiguity, as in that's precisely the 
two matrices that give you each rotation. Um, but it's not one-to-one, -one, so it's not invertible. So it's not an isomorphism. However, at the level of Lie algebras, R star from little su2 to little so3 is an isomorphism. Because, well, how do you see that it's a bijection? Let's look at the formula. If you know the matrix on the right hand side, you can just divide all its entries by two, and that tells you what x, y, and z are. So you can write down what the matrix had to be on the left hand side. So it is an isomorphism. So there is an inverse going this way. R star inverse exists. And it, you can check it is a Lie algebra homomorphism. But it doesn't correspond to a Lie, Lie group homomorphism. And that's okay because Lie's theorem only tells us that a Lie algebra homomorphism gives us a Lie group homomorphism if the domain is simply connected and the domain of R star inverse you know is little so3 and the corresponding group big so3 is not simply connected so this doesn't contradict Lie's theorem